I've since concluded by myself that I should make sure that my fear for three things erase in life. My fear for prison, my fear for the hospital, and my fear for the cemetery. This can be denoted by the struggle that I have faced as a young person in Zimbabwe. I have been arrested quite numerous times. It's surprising how the government thinks that when they offer me bail, they are giving me a gift or a birthday present. But the bail that I'm fighting for is a bailout of political instability. It's a bailout of economic mismanagement. It's a bailout of unemployment, which us as a generation are facing. At the end of the day, there are those stormtroopers in the name of Warakashi who are always mentioning about these arrests as if we are doing them willfully. But at the end of the day, we will check that the government has since uh, maybe make it a DNA or part of their habit to arrest young people who are fighting or trying to break the buccal cavities of oppression. But they will never stop. They will never be afraid. They will always fight on, just like myself. On the 26th of February to the 26th of March, I was in prison. They just picked me in town walking. It all reflects to a situation in which the democratic space is shrinking. It reflects to a situation in which the young people are not being given a chance to speak. The old is dying and the new cannot be born. That's a lie. It's a lie because the new is trying to be born, but the old is trying to die with the new. For my other arrest, I was arrested fighting for the justice of Juan Tawanam Cheyua, a 22-year-old journalism student at the Midlands State University who was abducted and tortured before the 31st of July protests by the government of Emerson Damzum Nangagwa. During my arrest, you will check that I had been given bail for the other arrest, which um, they articulated and stipulated that I should uh, be 100 meters away from Imbala car rental. I decided to choose resistance because it's language of the oppressed. And with resistance, I went 101 meters away of Imbala. I was abducted and tortured. And that's when I was hospitalized. At the end of the day, they arrested me. They made me stay in prison for around a month after such acts. So you see and denote that the democratic space is shrinking. You see and denote that the civic society space is shrinking day in, day out. Conceptually, it's a bit difficult for young people to understand where we've come from. And uh, to some degree, it's uh, somewhat unfair to expect them to understand. And the fact that they may not understand is really uh, an indictment uh, on the adult people who have not schooled uh, the youngsters in that respect. So, uh, because it's very important for all of us to understand where we're coming from, uh, because it's, uh, it, it impacts the present and uh, will also affect the future. Being young in Zim is an extreme sport. Like, I think it's every day trying to find your space, your voice in the country, your voice in the sense of who am I, if it's business, who am I? What's my niche? Like, where am I going in the next 10 years? Like, I'm trying to fit myself in the political landscape in Zim because it shapes the business in our country. I'm trying to fit myself into the economic um, landscape in Zim because it shapes the sustainability of my business. So I think that's kind of the, the struggle in Zim where every day, instead of leaving your dreams, you're consistently trying to defend your dream because we're living in an environment that almost makes it feel like it's not okay to dream. Being a young person in, in Zim, it's a, it's a hustle. Uh, that, that's, that, there's no two ways about it. In a lot of ways, things are really tough. Uh, economically, things are tough. You know, as we've been talking about, politically, things are tough. You try to, uh, to, to make things better for your family and you end up getting, getting arrested for just dreaming of a, of a better Zimbabwe. So that's the tough side of it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, even along the way, uh, I think there's still an incredible uh, spirit and passion uh, that, uh, that I see in the youth all around me, that brave people are really willing to, to put themselves on the line uh, to dream of, 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 of a brighter future. And that's inspiring, honestly. I think genuinely being young in Zimbabwe teaches you entrepreneurship as like one of the key 
uh, holders for your future because you, you really, really genuinely understand that they're just fewer and fewer opportunities that keep on coming by for the youth. We are still within the pandemic and you know, you, you look around, you know, a whole lot of companies have closed as to the result of the pandemic and you, you, you then ask yourself what is a better alternative, what is a better way really to go at things in Zimbabwe. Uh, I've really found out that entrepreneurship is really one of the key drivers that can really, you know, create more opportunities uh amplify and give voices to you being young in zimbabwe is tiring i think you age faster than you're meant to um it's suffocating because you look at other young people people your age people younger than you in other countries you see all the things that they manage to accomplish with the bare minimum of qualifications or experience and you compare your lives to them and you, you basically feel like you're going nowhere slowly. Young people have since resorted to consuming such highly addictive substances, which are of course taken for euphoric reasons. In their attempt to ignore um, the environment which is not offering them enough space or accommodating or enabling their dreams. Drugs such as alcohol, cannabis, Mixtures, particularly uh, hysterics, bronchia, have since been witnessed with a drug called Crestometh hitting the ghettos high and the ghetto youths have since resorted to such in their attempts to find or seek for hope in a forest which is offering nothing but unemployment, nothing but poverty, abject poverty, nothing but uh, failure to be accommodated in spaces which they can develop, spaces in which they can grow up and also uh, turn or materialize their dreams. Unemployment, 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 and unemployment. Um, I think when you don't produce opportunities for young people to get jobs, an idle mind means that they're now just chilling on the side of the road, engaging in things like robbery, and you know, crime and things like that. I also think another issue is young people don't have, um, they don't have a voice. That's the biggest issue. And it's not just looking at it as in terms of a political voice. I mean, you have so many young people in Zimbabwe who are members of the LGBTQA plus community and they are silenced, they are um, separated, they are marginalized. And I don't think that should be a situation. I think our government has other problems to worry about instead of worrying about what people do in their bedroom. My hopes for young people are, I believe that the time for young people to progress and succeed is now. And that uh, um, we need to create the necessary congenial environment for them to prosper. They create an illusion that they are listening to us. Um, and then after some time, we then realize that they are not listening to us at all. So we're all on pause waiting for something to happen, be it the electricity to come back or the economy to stabilize or a job to come through. There's certain things that our parents were doing when they were in their early 20s, putting down deposits for houses, getting married, uh, owning property. Whereas we over here, you know, we are still on the nipples of our parents. The major challenge that the young people are facing in Zimbabwe is just but the lack of an enabling environment because i believe that if young people are given a world or an environment that will accommodate their specific dreams zimbabwe will be great zimbabwe will be turned to become a first world country zimbabwe will be a developed rather than being a developing country we've got to desist or move away from the philosophy that uh, young people don't know much uh, some of their knowledge is innate, it's within them, so it can be utilized. So in Zimbabwe, you tend to see um, an apparent conflict between young and old. Uh, and I don't see w why and how that arises, because um, life is really a, a collaboration between young and old. I do understand that things are difficult for everyone, and I do understand that things are very challenging for everyone. However, I'm, I'm all for if we can work together, if we can really invest within each other to say if ever somebody's got an idea, if we can add onto it and amplify it and let it grow and become bigger and better, it's possible for us really to build long lasting things. It's possible for us really to really come to a space where we create things that are 
humongous. In the youth of Zimbabwe, there's an energy um, and a determination to, to keep pushing despite, uh, despite the obstacles. Uh, and I think that's something that we really have to hang on to and celebrate. The first thing that comes to my mind is um, political independence, because um, on TV, on radio, and in the independent, Independence Day is coming up, so it's the one thing that you are constantly being reminded of, the ability to be politically independent as a country, you see, as two streamer generations like Zoya after independence. But on a personal level, it's, it's, more than, it's more than political. It's my artistic independence, it's my personal independence to be able to do whatever I want in this beautiful country called Zimbabwe. I want to say to everyone in Zimbabwe, happy birthday, have a good time, and please remember where we come from and plan uh, for us where we want to go.